Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? Yeah. <laughs> so there's an exam on Monday. That's three days from now. Like at, in eight hours. Three days in eight hours. It, I'll, I'll post the room that you're in today. Quiz 5 is, is graded and it will be scanned probably at around 1 p.m. today. And by that I mean it'll, your grades for Quiz 5 will be in the gradebook and, so, and your scans will be available for download. Okay, so Quiz 6 is due Saturday night and it will not be graded by the time you take the exam. So you're going to have to look at the key and judge for, for yourself what happened on Quiz 6. Uh, but the keys for Quiz 6 will be posted um, Saturday night after, after the quizzes are due. So any question about any of that? Okay, <clears throat> so today's the 14th. No, not 2014. <laughs> that's, not, that's, that's not right. Okay, so last time uh, we were talking about operations that you can do with functions. Uh, so functions are in some ways like numbers in the sense that you can take two numbers and add them together and get a number, a new, a new thing, a, a new thing of the same category. So you can take functions and add them together and get a new function. That's nice. Okay, and you can do, the, you can do add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Okay, so you can't divide when the function... And, and then evaluate at a place where the denominator was zero. That's not okay. So, but unlike numbers, there's kind of one additional thing you have to consider, and that is the domain. So if you wanted to add two functions, then what's the, do, do, the domain of the new function? The intersection of the domains of the, of the constituent functions. Right? So then, so then every time you do an operation on a function, you're really operating on M multiple things and one of them is the domain so don't lose track of that okay so besides add subtract multiply and divide things you can do with numbers and functions what's the th what's the thing that we talked about on last time that you can do with functions but not with numbers circ, circ. okay to compose them you can compose functions okay so just as a brief reminder of last time What we said is that f circ g evaluate at x is f of g of x. Mm. Okay, so then sort of like an assembly line, think, taking sort of imagining these as machines, what this is saying is that, okay, we've got, an, we've got a g machine and x uh, so we've got two machines. We've got an F machine and a G machine. Is X given to G first or, or to F? G. It's given to G. So then X goes into the G machine and out, out comes a G of X. And then this output G of X is in turn the input to the F machine. And then what comes out as a result of that? F, G. F of G of X. So, so this is like two machines in a row. You can imagine an arbitrary number of machines in a row, right? a million of them all in a row. So then if you, if you just ignore what's happening on the inside, then it, then it looks like a single function from input to output if you ignore, if you just consider the insides to be a mystery. Taking this input and, and producing that output, that's the composition, f of g of x. Okay, this is looking at it, looking at the procedure in stages. Okay, so for example, suppose that we have f of x is 3x squared plus, uh, plus 5, and g of x is 2x minus 7. So in the first place, I'm going to ask you, please, would you please evaluate? F circ G at 
uh, say, three. So how do you do it? Right, so you just sort of follow your nose, I'd say. So the definition is that this is f of g of 3. Okay? That's, what, that's what it is. So then now, what's g of 3? Negative 1, right? So that would be f of 2 times 3 minus 7, because that's what g does with a 3. 2 times 3 is 6 minus 1. Minus 7. Uh, thank you. Minus 7 is, is negative 1. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then what does f do with a negative 1? It does that. So 3 times negative 1 <coughs> um, squared, and then plus 5. So that'd be 8. So sort of conceptually, conceptually, what happened is that we did a 3, and we gave it to the G machine. And then what came out of the G machine? Negative one. A negative 1 came out. And then we gave that that output as input to the F machine, and then what came out as a result of that? Eight. So it's like we're processing this in stages. Okay. So any question about this? So now what I want you to do is I want you to find expressions for F of G of X F circ G, and I also want you to find an expression for G circ F of X. Okay, so in the first place, so I'll do the left one first. This would be f of g of x. That's its definition. And now, just to be a little different, I'm going to make, I'm going to change it up just a little bit. Instead of doing it like this, I'm going to do it like this. So I'll say, okay, I can see that f, f takes its argument, and what it does is it produces argument squared multiplied by 3, add 5. So what is f's argument presently? It's g of x. g of x. So this would be 3 and then argument squared and then plus 5. All right, so whatever goes in here, all right, this is just whatever this is. Okay, and, and presently, it happens to be a g of x. And then what is g of x? 2x minus 7. So that would be 3, and then 2x minus 7, square that, and then add 5. So now, is there any question about getting from here to here? Right. So do you observe that f takes its argument, x, oh. and, and produces 3 argument squared plus 5? Yeah. 
So presently, if I just cover up that G and just say red box, then F of red box should be 3 red box squared plus 5. Okay. Then, is there any question from here to here? Because these my, my teaching experience tells me that if you can make it from this one to this one, you're most of the way there. And then if you can make it from this one to this one, you're essentially already at the end. So stop me now if there's a question. So from here, it's just a matter of algebra. We could FOIL this out. So then that would be 3, and then if you square 2x minus 7, what do you get? 4x squared minus 28x minus 29. Very good. So 4x squared minus 28x plus 49, and then plus 5. So this is FOIL because uh, this is the first, 2x times 2x. This is the last, negative 7 times negative 7. And then this is the inside and the outside. 2x times negative 7 plus negative 7 times 2x. Okay, then you can distribute this. That would be 12x squared minus uh, 6084x, <coughs> and then 150 minus 3. So that would be 12x squared minus 84 x plus 152. Okay, any question about that? <clears throat> okay. So, will g of f of x be the same? Well, if it was f plus g and it was g plus f, would it be the same? Yeah, it'd be the same. If, it was, if this was f plus g and this was g plus f, they'd be the same. But you're telling me that somehow this is going to be different? Okay. So what is the definition of this one then? If th right. This is g of f of x. Okay. So then what G does with its argument is it takes its argument X and produces two argument and then minus seven. So this would be two argument minus seven. And then now we have a further argument. So what does F do with its argument? It does that, right? So now we replace f with, with that thing. <clears throat> okay, so any question about getting from here to here? Okay, then from here it's just, it's just distribution and things like that. So 6x squared plus 10 minus 7. So 6x squared plus 3. Okay. So any question about this just mechanical procedure of plugging things in and, and everything? So I'd like to remark about something, and that is, are these the same? No, they're not, right? And I, what I, if you're disturbed about that, I want to sort of assure you that this is totally natural. Because composing, composing functions is very analogous to having an assembly line, where, where, you, have a, you, where you have a product and then, and then operations are being performed on it sequentially. So imagine that we, we were all working at a, at a doll factory, and that we had a machine, so we, had, we, had a, we had a doll, okay, and we, we were in charge of the assembly line process of dressing the doll. Okay. So then imagine that we have a machine that, that puts on left shoes, and we have another machine that puts on right shoes. Does it matter what order those two machines happen to be in for the final product? No, right? Because you would not be able to go to Toys R Us and look at a doll and detect whether or not its left shoe was put on first or its right. 
Now suppose that, suppose that this is a really fancy doll and that it has underwear and pants. And I, I say fancy because I have, a, I have a, a daughter and I can tell you that most dolls in fact do not have underwear. They, they only have pants. Okay, so this is a fancy one that ha has underwear and also pants. And that we have a machine that does each. A machine that puts on underwear, a machine that puts on pants. D does the order of these machines matter? Yes, right. <laughs> one of them is a Superman doll. The other is not a Superman doll, right? So, so doing things, the order in which you do things really does matter, okay? And this is just a, a very dry manifestation of that. Good. So any questions about this? Okay, so the next thing, the next thing we're going to talk about today is tr uh, section, section what? 3.5 Transformations of functions <clears throat> Okay, so for, for the rest of today, for the rest of today, it's opposite day Okay, so you'll, I, I think, I hope you'll understand my meaning when I say this. So, <clears throat> the reason why I say it's opposite day is because what we're going to do is we're going to take plots of functions and we want to move them around and, and modify them in different ways. We want to make them taller, shorter, we want to make them, uh, uh, scale them to make them wider and scale them to make them skinnier. We want to do all, all variety of things to these plots. Okay, but how we do it is going to be s perhaps opposite to the way that you think about it. Okay, so to, to explain my point, to explain my point, uh, what I want to do is the following. So it's hard to do this. I usually do it with a chair, but I can't really do it on the projector. Hmm. So, so what I want you to imagine, what I want you to imagine is that you can't see my hands, and in fact you can see nothing else at all in the universe except for this sheet of paper and this pen. That's all that, that you can see. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to move the pin to the right. Okay, the pin is going to move to the right. So here we go. And then you might object and say, ah, no, nah, you didn't move the pin to the right. You moved the paper to the left. And then I say, but, but then you didn't follow the instructions. Right? Because the only reason why you could detect that the paper moved to the right is because you were looking at my hand, which I said was invisible. Okay? So let's look at it again. I'm going to make, I'm going to make the pin move up. <laughs> okay? Wow, incredible. So, so what's happening is that there, there's two completely legitimate points of view. Okay, that you've got the object itself in question, and then you've got the coordinate system underneath it. So if we wanted to move the object up, we could, I could just I could just move it up. But just as well as I could say, well, I'm going to move the coordinate system down, and that's equivalent. They're equivalent points of view. Uh, to 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 state it differently, and I guess to stay on the topic of my young young daughter. When I, I have two children, one of them is one of them is a, a boy, and he's older, and he's tall. Both of his parents are tall, and he's tall for his age. And then, you know, through the through the mystery and lovely process of genetics, the daughter is she's just short. She's short, and when we go to when we go to the Texas State Fair, she cannot ride the rides essentially, just about. Okay, so. Um, now she can ride some of them, but she can't ride all the ones that her brother can, you know, and that's that's aggravating to her. So, <clears throat> so if I was magical, right? If I if I had magical powers, then I could sort of fix the process by just stretching her out, and then right, fixed. Okay. Or if I was magical and also a parent, then I could say, you know what? There's nothing wrong with her at all. I'm just going to take all of my magical powers and shrink all of the rides. That's it. 
There was nothing wrong with her, it was the rides. And that also accomplishes it, right? Because all those, all those signs that say you must be this tall, if I just made them half as tall as they were, then she could do it. Right? So then it's the same point of view. It is to say that, you know, you could accomplish becoming twice as tall as you are now by making everything else half as tall. So that's what I mean by opposite day. So here we go. So this is the definition of a horizontal shift. So a horizontal shift Uh, by H is X transforms to X minus H. Okay, so for example, suppose we have a function Y is F of X and that, that we make this transformation Y is f of x minus 3. And suppose we were to look at the plot of what, of what occurred. So what occurred here? So how would the plot move? x would go right and shift it to the right. Yes, the plot is going to move right. The plot moves right. Three. The plot moves right three. Now, I hope you're looking this and looking at it and saying, now, wait a second. I can clearly see that we're subtracting three. And I also know that right is the increasing direction. And so I'm disturbed that you're telling me that subtracting three is moving it to the right. So I, I hope that you have just a little bit of dissonance going on. So, so something is moving to the left. What is moving to the left? It's not the plot. The coordinate system. The coordinate system is moving to the left. That's what's moving to the left. Which is, and that's exactly what I was saying with this. Suppose that I want to move this pin to the right by three units then I could actually move it or I could move the coordinate system and the same effect is achieved. Okay, so let's try again. So if y is p of x uh, transforms in this way, y is p of x plus 7. So what occurred? Yes, the plot moves to the left by 7. That's the, that's the point of view of the plot, of watching the plot. So what, from the point of view of the coordinate system, what happened? Yes, the coordinate system moved to the right 7. And be careful to understand that I'm not saying that both of these happened. I'm saying that either one of these two things happened depending on your point of view. Because if you move the plot right 7 and the coordinate system left 7, that'd be a total movement of 6. Okay. <clears throat> so how about this? Suppose that um, I do something like this. Yes, you have a question? Um, how, how would it move six in total if it was seven? I'm, this one. Oh, uh, okay. I, 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 have, I happen to be point. I might have, I might have been pointed this one, but I, I okay. was meaning this one. If you, move some, if you moved the plot to the right three and also you moved the coordinate system left three, that'd be a total movement of six. Okay.
So, suppose that uh, we have the standard parabola. So that's the standard parabola, and it is y is x squared. So that's one of the mem one of the family members of the families of functions that you are requested to memorize. So uh, suppose that suppose that I say, okay, then what is then what is this? Y is x minus two squared. It? The plot. the plot, right? The plot moves left two. Oh, sorry. The plot moves right two. And it doesn't do anything up and down. It's just like taking this, this red bit and just moving it over. And the reason why that's occurring, you can see the subtraction, it's just like saying, okay, well, I'm going to hold the red still for a moment. I'm going to grab the axis, I'm going to pull the axis to the left, two units, and then what would it look like if you did that? It would look like this. Okay, so any questions about this? Okay. So, um, We, we've talked about horizontal shift. What do you think I'm going to talk about next? Vertical shift. <laughs> so a vertical shift of k units is given by so in the first place if we if we stick with the convention that that x means the horizontal coordinate and y means the vertical coordinate then which coordinate is going to be played with here the y y is going to be played with mm -hmm. just like la on the last page we were talking about horizontal transformation so we needed to play with with x so if we're going to do this we're going to play with y and the transformation is y becomes y minus k. So for example, one way you could think about it is that um, if, if, if I wanted to go up a floor and I could, and I was magical, right, then I could just sort of just float up to the next one, just, just float and move myself up to the next floor. But if I was magical, it would just as well work to hold myself still and push the entire world down. That would work just as well. Okay, so this is the point of view that that okay, I'm I'm staying still and I'm just going to push the whole world down. Okay. So then, please tell me what this transformation is doing. Y is Q of X <coughs> transforms to Y minus uh, nine is q of x. What's going up 9? The plot. So the plot moves up 9. That's the point of view of the plot. What's the point of view of the coordinate system? Down 9. I got in the elevator and pushed the world down 13 floors. Right? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so how about... Y as R of X transforms to Y plus 3 is R of X minus 4. W what? Good. So, so in the first place, let's let's remark. 
the, compare, comparing these two. So for this one, for this one, what, was there a horizontal change for this one? What, what signals you that there is in fact no horizontal change? Yeah, the X's are not played with. Is there a vertical change in this one? Yes, and what signals you that, that there's a vertical change? Yeah, we play with the Y's. So for the present example, is there a horizontal change? Yes. Is there a vertical change? Yes, because we played with both variables. Okay. So, yes, the plot moves right for, uh, and down three. And then the coordinate system point of view is that the coordinate system moves left four and up three. Any question about that? So here's one, and this is, so now I'm going to give you an example of the way the book says it, and then I'm going to go on a slight rant about what the author has done in the book. So suppose we have y is s of x, and we'll transform it like this. Y is s of x plus uh, 8. Right. So then, so, so what's happening here? What's what's moving, and how is it moving? All the y's. Okay. Be careful. The, all the y's of what? So is it the? So you're saying something is going up, and my question to you is: is is it the plot that appears to move up, or is it the coordinate system that appears to move up? So now let me let me tell you what, why there's a why it's difficult to see what's happening. So notice in this example, in this one, I asked, is there a horizontal change? And what was the answer? No. And how could you detect on this one that there is no horizontal change? We didn't play with the x's. Was there a vertical change? Yes, because we did in fact play with the y's. And then, did we play with the y's? Yes, there's a vertical change. Did we play with the x's? Yes, there is a horizontal change. And now my question to you is, that when you write it this way, which variable did you play with? Y. You, played with you played with the y's. So what, what you should do, and what I recommend, is that you, you rewrite this equation so that it's clear to you which thing was played with. Can you get the 8 with the x's? No, but you can move it over with the y's. And now it looks like this. So these equations are equivalent. They have the same meaning. But now if you look at if you look at this one, I think it's more clear. It, was there a horizontal change, a horizontal one? No, because the x's were not played with. Was there a vertical change? Yes, because we played with the y's. So, and what was that change? Yes. The Very good. So the plot moves up 8. Or, if you like, the coordinate system moves down 8. <clears throat> okay, so now, my remark to you is the following is that the way the book, the book represents this, the way uh, it talks about it, it says y is f of x transforms to y is f of x minus c. It calls this a horizontal shift of c. Okay? And I agree with that point of view. That's correct. And then the book says the following. It says, y, of f, y is f of x transforms to y is f of x plus k. It says that this is a vertical shift of k. 
And that's correct. There's nothing, lo there's nothing factually incorrect about that. But the problem is, is that you, you, if you're not paying close attention or if your instructor doesn't stress it too hard, you lose fact that the reason why this is vertical is because this K is associated to the Y, but you've written it over here and not with the Y, and so you lose that association altogether. So the way, so I just refuse to write it the way it's written in the book, and I'll write it like this. And notice you cannot do the same thing with the, with the C. Right? C is in the argument to F, so it cannot come out to play. Okay? It can't be moved around. Good. So both of these points of view are legitimate and important, but for the purpose of this section, th this one is far the superior. And I can't understand or even fathom why the, the author would have done this. It's the difference between the point of view that if you imagine in your mind's eye a rocket lifting off, doing its thing, if you were invulnerable you, and, and you could be on the launch pad, you could be standing here and watch the rocket, and it, you know, that'd be an interesting thing. Uh, but another point of view is that you could actually be on the rocket and watch the world fall away. And, and then in that sense, you're staying still. Okay? And this is, the, this is the point of view that you're on, the, this one is the point of view that you're on the launch pad watching the rocket move away. And this is the point of view that you're on the rocket. Okay, so, more. So now we have a horizontal scale. So this means to make things bigger, left and right. So a horizontal scale scale of C is given by So in the first place, if we keep if we keep the letters x and y to have their usual meanings of horizontal and vertical, which which variable are we playing with? We're playing with x's because we're talking about a horizontal scale. So that means that x is going to have to transform. Okay? And we want if this was 3, I might be asking, how could I make the object 3 times as wide? I want it to be 3 times as wide as it was before. It's not 3x. It's x over 3. And that's what that's this is part of what I meant when I said today is opposite day. Okay, so then now, what I want you to imagine is ha have a look at the floor for a moment. We have tiles, okay? Every one of these tiles is one foot square. That's the measurement of these tiles. So we could, you know, we could, um, <coughs> you know, measure the width of this room somewhat accurately by just counting the tiles left and right. So let, let's say that it's 20. I, I have no idea, but let's say it's 20. And and that we determine, oh, it would be much better if this room was 40 feet wide. Then on the one hand, we could you know, do it the way we must do it and just actually do a construction project. But if we're magical, okay, then what we could do, what we could do is we could take all of the ru rulers that exist and we could make it such that whenever they're held left to right in this room, they're half as long as they formerly were, right? Because if, if, if formerly we could take 20 such rulers and stack them left to right, and that was the width of the room, and if we magic the universe into saying that now they're half as long, then how many rulers could fit? 40. 40 of them could fit, and then the room would be 40 feet wide. So it's the same thing. I wrote three, but I meant C, <laughs> obviously. But I had three on the brain. So, for example, for example, what is this transformation? Y is M of X transforms to Y minus five is M of X over two. Okay, 
So in the first place, before, before you set out to do anything, you should ask yourself, self, was there a horizontal change? Is there a horizontal transformation? Okay, how can you detect that there's a horizontal transformation? Right, we played with the X's. So something is happening horizontally. Was there a vertical transformation? Yes. Why? Why? Because we played with the Y's, right? Okay. <clears throat> so, so I'm going to do the simple, the simple one first, or the the old one first, anyway. The plot moves up five because we pulled the coordinate system down five. Okay. Then what happens as a result of this? Left to right. Okay. So this is a horizontal scale of two. Okay. Any question about this? Okay. How about y is um, y is g of x transforms to y is g of 3x. D scale? <laughs> scale of one third. So is there a vertical transformation? Why, so why is there no vertical transformation? We didn't play with the Y's. We didn't play with the Y's. So is there a horizontal transformation? Yes, because we played with the X's. X became 3X. So this is the plot undergoes a horizontal scale of what? One third. Okay, so then now, if that's disturbing to you, I want I want to imagine I want you to imagine the following. So, so there there is a human being named Usain Bolt, and he's extraordinarily fast, person. Okay, he's faster than this, but let's make it easy. Let's say he runs the hundred yard dash in ten seconds, the hundred meter dash. So he can run 100 meters in 10 seconds. He's actually even faster than that. But then let's say that we trick Usain Bolt and we actually, we, say, we tell him that he's running 100 meters. But we actually make it, we actually make it three to three meter, 300 meters. We've made the track three times as long. Then, then he's gonna appear to run faster or slower? Slower because it's going to take him a lot longer to run 300 meters, right? So what's happening here is that the, the object, the object, if you were looking at a plot, what you did is you made, you made all of the left to right measurements much bigger. So, so that means that the object itself was skinnier. It appears to be skinnier. In the same sense that if I could take this room, if I could take this room and make it three times as wide, you might have the sense of being a little smaller. Okay? So, for example, So suppose in red, I give you the following. And I say that this is the plot of F. So this is 
Why is f of x in red? And I say, OK, now I've given you the red. And what I want for you to do is provide for me the green. I'm going to make this plus 2 a plus 3 just so I didn't write 2 in, in both places. Okay, so then now you tell me. So I've given you red, and I want you to give me green. So what, do you, what needs to occur to every point? Every point has to go down 3. Down 3. Mm-hmm. So if its horizontal, pos horizontal position was 1, what would its new horizontal position be? 2. If its horizontal position was 8, what would its new horizontal position be? 16. If its horizontal position was negative 4, its new horizontal position would be negative 8. So then, so then, here's a point. It needs to move down. So let, let's, write down what, let's write down what's happening here. We have to do down 3, and we also have to do a horizontal scale of 2. So this point needs to move down 3. What's its horizontal position? So what is its current horizontal position? 2. Its new horizontal position will be 4. So it'll move down 3 and then scaled over to 4. OK. So then how about this one? It'll move how, up and down. How will it move? Three. Down 3. What's its current horizontal position? Negative two. Negative 2. What will its new horizontal position be? Negative 4. Negative four. And then this one I wasn't thinking clearly. OK, so then this one <laughs> needs to move. Up and down how? Three. Down 3, so right there. Its present hor horizontal position is what? Negative, negative 4. And its final horizontal position will be? Negative. negative 8, which is like way over here. Sorry. So then the, the final result will look like this. Something like that. Okay, have a nice weekend, study for the exam, good luck.